in for it now, you poor creature. <laughs> What's going on out there anyway? They've been at it all afternoon. Oh, it's a young black cat I've never seen before. And that old white and gray Tom. Yeah. I think Tony's mother cat has been entertaining. Well, I hope they get it settled before bedtime. We'll be up all night. Well, my money is on the gray. Mm -hmm. Hey, can I do that for you? Oh, I have it, thanks. Uh, Mary called just now. No change. Uh, they're going to stay at the hospital a little while longer and then come back for some supper. Has she spoken to Ed? Not in the last hour, but they're going to see him before they come back. Well, when they, when they come in, I, I think I'll go over for a couple of minutes. All right. John. Yes. Ed will tell us, won't he? I mean, if there's something that we need to know. He gave me his word. When I was a child, my mother had pneumonia. In Ireland, 1936. A wet, damp winter it was. No central heating, no antibiotics. <laughs> and a village doctor that worked his way around the clock because the animals were so important that the, the farmers called him in on their cows. If she could pull through, I mean, weighing 102 pounds and just finished nursing a baby before she got sick, surely Frank, with all his strength. Maybe. Ed explained it to us. Now, Frank's whole system has, has slowed down because of whatever's happened to his spinal cord, so nothing's working quite right. Oh, I understand. I just, I just can't believe that it has anything to do with Frank Ryan. I know. It's a fr frightened thought that the goodness and joy and life of that boy is dependent on some such fragile thing. I mean, a little thin cord running up his back like a puppet string. Francis Michael's in trouble. You can't help him. You can't. Yes. <laughs> Listen. Oh, good grief, good grief. They're not giving up, are they? No, they're not. John. All this life everywhere, and not for Frank. And your orientation at Riverside Hospital is now complete. Have you met Johnny yet? Oh, briefly at the hospital. Well, why don't we say hello before we sit down? Okay. Roger, how are you? Hello, Johnny. And, uh, you're the new x-ray doctor at the hospital. I'm sorry I forgot your name. No, go back, Mr. Ryan. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh Johnny, please. <laughs> okay. Is there anything new on Frank's condition? Uh, nothing yet, Johnny, I'm sorry. But we've got to give the antibiotic a little more time. Sure. And no one told me that your son was running for city council. That's a marvelous poster. Thank you. Well, it's clear that you haven't had much time to walk around the neighborhood. Uh, not yet. It's everywhere. Did you know that Dad has two posters in the parlor windows at home? Well, now, who do you think said I'm over to him? <laughs> Listen, you're new at Riverside, right, Doctor? Most recently from Minnesota, but I've um, been in and out of New York all my life. Well, I like people who come to town by choice. Good. I 
like being here. Well, now, if, uh, if you want to know a little bit about this community outside the hospital, uh, let me tell you that uh, my son's campaign headquarters is a good place to start. I forgot to warn you, but during the primary, it wasn't safe to come in here unless you were prepared to stuff envelopes while you drank your beer. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, what do you have? Well, no, no. as a gesture of welcome, allow me to give you on the house some of my best Irish, all right? Now that is the ultimate tribute. Oh, thank you. Now this happens to have been distilled not two miles from the house where my wife was born in huh? County Cork. Oh, you're um, keeping your son's campaign going then. That's right. Let's drink to Ryan's and to Riverside. Here, here. Thank you. Now look, uh, make yourselves comfortable. And when you're ready to order, just give me a shout. We will, Johnny, and thank you. You're welcome. Doesn't he understand? About the pneumonia? The Frank's condition is, is really very critical. I think Johnny understands perfectly. They're all hanging tough. I admire them. Where did you go? It's just that that particular kind of courage about death and dying always touches me. This is lovely. <laughs> Dr. Bolak, do not misinterpret what I'm about to say, because it's a spontaneous little outpouring of admiration. I think you're lovely. And I think you're obviously a highly competent doctor. And I think Riverside is lucky to have you on staff. And I'd like to drink to that. Thank you for talking me into this. You have been consistently nice ever since I arrived, and I am very grateful. Would you believe that you and I are going to provide the sixth floor with enough gossip for at least 10 days or so? We are? Well, don't look now. We're being watched. Within a half an hour, the entire neurology department is going to know that you and I were having a friendly time at the bar at Ryan's. Why would they care? Are you kidding? No. <laughs> Dr. Bolak, you may not be aware of it, but you are the source of endless speculation in the department. Am I? <laughs> yes, you are. Everyone wants to know what you're doing here, why you've left your husband, if you've left him. A lot of people know who Seneca Bolak is. Oh, yes. But most important, why you're in such a hurry to make things happen. About my work, you mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not really such a mystery. I've been in Minnesota for the past three years just twiddling my thumbs. <laughs> I don't want to waste any more time. What's the matter? Well, I was just wondering if that's the whole story. Now you're speculating. No. No, actually, it's my conviction that everything becomes apparent in its own proper time. But there is one thing I'd rather know sooner than later. About what? Have you left your husband? Seneca's in Minnesota, and I'm in New York. Does that constitute left? It'll do. That's all I want to say about it, Roger. That's all you have to say. Strike for your country, O'Donnell, oh, 
<laughs> Hello there. I made it. You made what? I was accepted. In law school? Oh, oh, oh Frank! Frank! Oh, 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 oh. How about that? It's a splendid excuse for your present condition. No, that's a fact. Oh. Bob and I separated a little. No, no wonder. Oh, I'm so proud of you. I could burst. Where's Doc? Oh, he's upstairs asleep. Come on, let's get him. Wait just a minute. I have a present for you. It's linoleum. I can see it's linoleum. When I saw the flowers and the roses, I thought of you. Red rose, proud rose, sad rose of all my days. Oh, great heavens, it's my father all over again. <laughs> Three drinks, <laughs> you're spouting Yates and rebellion. Do you like it? Oh, oh I love it. <laughs> It's the most wonderful linoleum I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Put it down now, and I'll, I'll get you a cup of coffee. Come on. Thank you. It's a fine, dear present. Mm. <laughs> There's a story behind it. Oh, I, I thought there might be. <laughs> Mr. Weinberg had a fire. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Who's Mr. Weinberg? He had a floor covering store just off Houston Street. Yes. He was on my beat down there. He's a nice man. He's been married for 46 years to Mrs. Weinberg, and they have seven grandchildren. Oh. Well, he had a fire in his store. I heard about it because I ran into Phil Petrie, who has that beat now. And I so I called Mr. Weinberg up to say that I was sorry. But he told me he was having a closeout sale. Uh, because he was moving to Florida, and for me to come on down there before I went home. And then I heard the news about law school, and Delia wasn't home, so I grabbed Bob, and we went sebelating. <laughs> but you remembered to go buy Mr. Weinberg. Mm. Well, I, I wanted to buy you a present anyhow, and then I saw this. Mr. Weinberg tried to give it to me for you, but I wouldn't let him. It was a great buy, though. A dollar nineteen a square yard. Oh, my dear. Are you sure you like it? Oh, I love it. I can't wait to put it down. <laughs> Good. Um, have you told Delia about law school? Yes, I called her a little while ago. Well, was she pleased? Well, she, she likes the idea of being married to a lawyer, but she doesn't much like the time it's going to take to get there. Ooh. I can understand that. It means I'm going to be late three or four times a week, and yeah. then studying when I get home. Maybe I can get her to go back to school. Did you? Well, uh, not for credit or anything, just to, just to find out more about the things she's interested in. <laughs> what would that be, do you think? Well, she's, uh, she's interested in, in history. It depends on what, uh, what mood she's in. She's interested in, in, in music. Well, you might try. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how proud of you I am? I'm glad. Oh, <laughs> oh let's 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 go tell your father. <laughs> oh, Ryan a boo. <laughs> While the orgasmen the wolves is howling. Fearless, the eagle sweeps over the plain. The fox in the streets of the city is howling, and all that resist him are vanished or slain. On with O'Donnell's and fight the old fight again. Sons of the town are vanished and through. Side by your fighters and all with your salmon and strike for your cause, the O'Donnell of Are you all right, lady? Oh. oh, yes, sure. I was just looking at this linoleum. It's almost so worn. Do you think possibly it's that we could replace it with the same pattern still?
The fact is, I really can't thank you enough for this evening, Roger. I feel about a thousand percent better than I uh, did when I left this wretched room this morning. Well, when you're ready to look for an apartment, let me know. There are a few places in the neighborhood that I think I can help you with. Well, I'm ready now. I uh, simply haven't had the time. Well, if you can get a few hours free on Saturday, I'd be happy to take you around. Thank you. Well, let's just see how things go. You see before you a desperate man. Oh? Because I'm desperately trying to think of something to say so you won't tell me goodnight and close the door. <laughs> well, what's the alternative? Well, you could invite me in for a drink. Oh, uh, no luck. Well, why not? There's nothing to drink. Room service. Roger, dear, I have spent at least one month of every year of my life at this hotel. They know my husband. They know my sister and her husband. They know just about everything there is to know about me. And if I were to call room service at this hour for drinks with a young man none of them have ever seen before, the management might very well decide that I was in terrible peril and have you arrested. <laughs> well, since I'm in no hurry to spend the night in jail, why don't we forget about room service? <laughs> And uh, we'll talk instead. I have the feeling that you and I have a lot more to talk about. Oh, I have no doubt that we do. Starting with, good night. No. Good night, darling. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, and thank you. Thank you. I know lots of card tricks. Oh, Roger, stop it. And I juggle, and I read palms, and I once blew 14 smoke rings on one puff. No, Roger. Here's my phone. Good night. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Where have you been? I've been calling around 7 o'clock your time. I've been at dinner with a friend. Well, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I hope you're lying. All right, it, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. I'm glad you said that. I am incredibly depressed. What about? I don't want you in New York. I want you home. Which is to say that you're depressed because you're not getting your own way. I miss you. Then come to New York. I can't come to New York. Come home. Oh, Seneca, this is so unfair. Please leave me alone. Hey, you're not alone. You're in New York having dinner with friends uh, till the middle of the night. I'm the one who's alone. I need to be where I am. And since you couldn't and wouldn't give me what I need, please don't interfere with what I've done for myself. What you've done now is you've made a terrible mistake. No. No? Why are you trying not to cry? Why am I walking around in a rage? Now, something is wrong somewhere. Darling, everything's wrong, but it doesn't have much to do with my being in New York. Will you stop being so damned elliptical and just say what you mean? I mean that I... I was right in leaving you, Seneca. It might help if I looked in for a minute. There is no change. I know someone would call if they'd been. It's, it's funny. I have such a sense of trouble that I can't sleep, and yet I know <laughs> that no sleep only makes the trouble seem worse. Well, I'm sure Dr. Colwich would prescribe something for you if you wanted. I don't take much stock in those kinds of drugs, Miss Morris. I, I feel, by and large, that the body does what it needs to. Thanks, just the same. Strangely enough, it's better in this room. Here, it seems real. At home, or at the bar, or in the kitchen. None of this seems possible. 
I keep expecting him to walk in the door and make himself a sandwich and tell us the latest. Of course. I thought I'd let go. I thought I'd stepped back and given him to life and his work and his wife and his son. And I find now I haven't at all. He's still my firstborn. He's still my own sweet child. He's the person I probably know best in the world. I know that part of him that's pure John Ryan. I know that part of him that's my father all over again. And I know what's in him of me. I know the man he is, and I, I celebrate it. I've known how to share his joy all these years. What I don't know is how to share his dying. In Port Charles, revenge is a priority, relationships are disposable, and good medical care is a necessity. Keep up with this fast-paced city with an all-new episode of General Hospital, weeknights at 10 on SoapNet.